what's up everybody this is me with baby leo here don't forget to like and subscribe in the video below say hi everybody say hi leo say hi thank you for watching guys welcome everybody to tectonic takes this is your regular host favi here what's up guys um we're gonna go ahead and review the austin fc game which just happened earlier today and i'm actually here with one of the biggest quakes diehards actually jesse morales what's up he's from our patreon so what's up how you doing jesse thank you for so much for supporting us and thank you so much for coming on the show we i really appreciate you coming on today yeah no thank you guys for uh, taking the time and uh giving us some fans uh some time on your podcast i really appreciate it and uh man i can't say it enough i love the quakes but sometimes i'm online trying to trying to express my anger to Twitter posts and Instagram posts, but um, also want to talk to fans and, and mm. see where, where the organization's at. And, and it's, it's always a blast to talk to everyone who's a, who's a Quakes fan. I've never had a bad interaction with anybody and, and it's super exciting to, to be here. Yeah. I mean, all the, all Quakes fans are a great time or they're literally all good people. So if you ever see one in the out in the open, I'm always looking for kids, you know, when, when you go to like Disneyland or something, you always see like Seattle kids. I'm like, Oh, maybe one day I'm going to see that Quakes kid and be like, yo, what's up, dude? Right. No, but, <laughs> but no, definitely uh, all Quakes guys are, are the best. Everybody out there um, say what's up if you see us. Right. So, uh, but you do want to display your, 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 uh, your anger on Twitter. So you came on the podcast, right? So, so you can yeah. show it a little better, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe do a whole rounded argument for it. <laughs> yeah. It was getting pretty bad. I mean, with the pandemic, I mean, yeah, pretty much just stuck at home. There were no quakes <laughs> games. There was no way to kind of yeah. yell at the, at, <laughs> at the opposing team. I mean, mm. me and my buddy would just go to home games, like left and right. We, mm. we essentially just pretty much decided like, Hey man, we, we went to all the games, but we're not season ticket holders. I mean, might as well just uh, cross yeah. that bridge and just get the tickets going. And it's been so, it's been all right so far. I mean, <laughs> the beginning of the season was just the euphoria, you know, just like, yeah. oh man, we're first place, but now we're, we're kind of back to reality. <laughs> no, definitely. And, and I think, I think based off of today's game, we're a little bit on a higher note than we were. Yeah last yesterday right or the day before a couple games ago <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean a clean sheet the first clean sheet in the year for jt marcinkowski which is it's just huge i mean if you if you were counting there was always one goal that like slipped in or or something happened on our wins where it was in a full clean sheet and now he got man of the match and maybe jesse don't agree with it so much but he definitely got his clean sheet and it was important um before we go into the whole preview i wanted to ask a little bit more about you and your quakes fandom um so the fans get to know who you are what made you a quakes fan when you were younger uh yeah i gotta actually thank my mom for that <laughs> uh this was back uh i would say a couple maybe one or two seasons before their first um mls cup and so this was back at Spartan Stadium. So my mom, I was a young kid. I was probably like six or seven at the time and uh, very antisocial. So mm. any parties that I would go to, I'd be like, hey, can we leave? You know, I'm, I'm kind of mm. bored already. Let's leave. I would cry. So it would be the same thing going into Quakes matches. Um, I mean, I like soccer. I like playing it, but yeah. watching it in person at the time when I was a kid, you know, you just want to play, you know, you don't want right. to watch it. Right. Um, but she kept taking me. She's like, no, you you have to go out. You know, you have to socialize here and there. She's like, you, you never know. You'll you'll probably like the team. Right. And man, she was right. <laughs> I, after a couple matches, I mean, um, especially after winning the MLS Cup, you know, you get that winning mentality. I'm like, yeah. hey, I want to be like the Earthquakes. You know, let me go ahead and, mm. and support the club. You had Landon Donovan. You had a right. um, couple of other notable players. Cerritos is one of my favorites. Mm. Uh, and so it was kind of disappointing to see them move over to Houston mm. uh, to become the Houston Dynamo and win two more cups, which I, I strongly for me believe that would have been our four stars yeah, right for there sure. for the earthquake. Right. Um, and so I kept following MLS after that, just out of curiosity on how the league would grow. Mm. And uh, fortunately we were able to get our team back. And so, yeah, I thought of it as an expansion. I knew no, things were going to be rough for the first few seasons and they were i mean not too great not too terrible but um man they were picking up some steam when they moved over to buckshaw and uh that's when i actually 
decided to work, try to be a little closer to the organization. And uh, I just became an usher for the team. So you would see me taking in tickets or actually being in the locker room of the visiting team or the home team. Oh, wow. Making sure no fans would enter. So a um, couple of times I would wave over to the fan, uh, not to the fans, <laughs> to the, um, the Quakes players or to the away team. And th- they were all great people. And so that just made me more invested into the club. Right. And, hoping for their success every every game and um seeing them just dominate 2012 i was just right. like this is it this is this is the <laughs> dynasty again Here you know go. they're gonna win two more cups they're gonna win three four you know they're gonna beat la with their new signings and everything and i don't know man just after 2013 things crumbled mm. and uh, i still try to follow them i'm like you know what this, it's all right you know just rebuild and right. we'll, we'll compete once more and Man, seven years later, I'm still saying the same thing. <laughs> no, and, and right when we go back into Avaya, that's where I hop on. So I'm a very, very new fan relative to what your story is. Um, I remember going to a, a game with my soccer team as a kid and not knowing where we were, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> so yeah. definitely, definitely. Um, I did go to a Quakes game when I was younger, but I, I just wasn't interested in it. I was interested in playing soccer, like you said, and, and eating tacos, you know, having a good time with my friends, but not watching the game. But nowadays kids love watching. I mean, Twitch is huge. Kids love watching, playing video games. And that's something I never understand. Right. Cause I, I'm like, why don't you just play the game? You know? So, right. <laughs> but, but definitely it's funny that it's flip-flop now so that we will we wanted to play while they wanted to watch so but interesting stuff interesting stuff thank you jesse for the little backstory and and basically let's go right into this before we go into the kind of the preview of or the post game what's your tatonic take for this season oh let's see i really want to say that the Quakes will go on and finish at least fifth in the standings. Oh, okay. And they'll they'll at least try to try to kind of put themselves back on the map and I'll say they'll they'll be in the conference finals. Do we sign someone? Oh man. <laughs> right. That is a really tough question. I'm gonna say yes, but nothing too crazy. I'm just gonna say they're gonna pick up players that we that we obviously needed to kind of replace some of our yeah. um, expiring contracts. And so center back has obviously been rumored. Yeah. I'm pretty sure our fans Definitely. have been noticing uh, some of the Twitter posts or Instagram posts. And uh, yeah. I am hoping for a DP striker or right. a central attacker. Um, something that's yeah. something in that um, offense, but I do believe it is going to be an attacking mid. Yeah. And I was thinking the other day, I was like, you know, the rumored center back that's coming in, uh, Nathan, uh, which everybody's talking about, I'm okay with him coming in. I guess a lot of people saying yeah. he kind of looks like Jefferson Quintana. Um, I was hoping Jefferson Quintana comes back. To be honest, he's still young. I think he's still 22 years old. And now we, you know, because he's Uruguayan, right? I would love to have a Uruguayan yeah. on the team. <laughs> but um, no, definitely if he plays like that, if he's, I guess, aggressive and needs to be disciplined, one person that can get disciplined into a player is definitely Matias Almeida. So yeah. I think that that would be a strong suit for him um, coming in. And then, I was thinking, you know what? What if we got Pizarro? Like, what if we actually got Pizarro? As a fan, if we got center back help and we got Pizarro, I would be ecstatic, right? I would be crazy. I would be okay with Wando, Rios, and uh, Cade doing like a rotating three-man striker if we got another quality, quality player to, you know, help the load of Espinoza and trophies. Um, Yeah. We were talking a little earlier um, before about trophies. Do we know if he's helpful yet or not? Right. Because he almost scored a banger, but we were looking at the stats here and neither no striker, but yeah, no striker. This game had a shot. So definitely something's going on with the link of play. I know Andy Rios had a bad pass on a link of play where maybe he could have turned in and shot. Um, but again, still no shots by a striker. That's a little odd. And that has to be, some sort of disconnect between Chofis Lopez, our 10 or the, the, the wingers and our side, our strikers. So definitely something to think about. Um, but Jesse thoughts on the game. I mean, what did you think of the game? Were you excited? I know I was, I was really excited. Yeah. We had a whole bunch of like match day posters going and things like that. Um, I was talking with Austin FC fans, but it was, it was a fun time. What'd you think? Yeah. Uh, I mean, after the international break, it was a little nerve wracking. I'm like, yeah. Oh man, 
usually when this happens, I mean, the, the last time this happened was probably in the MLS's back tournament where they had a strong ending, but mm. not a great start to the season. So right. uh, it was kind of those, uh, those vibes. And so mm. uh, the first 10 minutes uh, as I was watching the game, I'm like, Oh man, they already, they already got a, a March of got, got an amazing save in the first 10 minutes. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's one of his highlights. And uh, uh, yeah, that, on no, that Fagundes header and Fagundes yeah. is, weirdly good at headers right you never yeah. think that this guy's good at heading the ball but you no know, he's, he's he's had a lot of heading goals so definitely a great save by marcin kowski yeah and so the, the game went on and they they were improving and i know we were talking about it um one of the the most scariest parts was just uh jutsen being outperformed by gallagher and yeah and, and the, one of the things that irked me is they it always happens with any san jose team i know with the sharks or earthquakes <laughs> Whenever just like this random player, no names, does, no names, just start coming up and <laughs> right, right, right. And the commentators are like, "Man, this guy's a star." I'm like, oh, "But what about our players?" You know? Right, right. <laughs> but um, they played really well with Espinosa on the right. Mm. Um, I think that's where primarily they were they were attacking from. But uh, yeah. with trophies, uh, he was playing really well. But I wouldn't say too bad or too great it was just Mm. more of like you guys came back from an international break right and you're playing in um austin's home opener so i'm sure the atmosphere there is just totally different from what you see in paypal or yeah and 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 if for fans that don't i guess it's a little hard to grasp when you're not there but playing in a if for the guys who are there when avaya opened it's like a cup final you don't want to lose that game or tie that game um teams play not as open but in this game actually was really exciting was back and forth back and forth back and forth and i was amazed danny Husen didn't make the field to be honest because it felt like they needed a striker (laughs) right so it was maybe 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 san jose had something in their claws where it was like hey if you select them you can't play them against us or something but I, I don't know why they wouldn't put an extra striker that's tall into the game i know he wasn't really good with his head but i mean still it's danny Husen against the team he played against so might as well put him out there Um, (laughs) but again they don't want to lose this game or even tie this game this is a game they want to win they want to party they want to have a great time and um but we saw a little bit of i guess a little swagger from jackson yule kind of stood out to me he didn't have the best of passes but he had one one part where he just like oh laid the defender on him and i was like whoa okay he didn't do that before uh the u.s men's national team trip but Maybe we see Jackson get, come back to form after a little bit. But speaking about Utsen, um, Gallagher looked like a superstar, man. I was like, man, we yeah. should trade for Gallagher. What's going on with that? Um, but Jutsen's link-up play with Espinosa was actually really good. I was amazed. Um, I haven't seen that out of Marcos Lopez or Paul Marie with the link-up play. I have seen that out of Tommy Thompson, but last year. I haven't seen it this year. So I was I was shocked at Judson's link of play with Espinoza. Um, but maybe there's some sort of connection there from last year, right? What do you think of of the rest of the guys on the roster? Uh, the rest of the guys were pretty good. Mm. Um, I know when we were talking, I, I believe my man of the match would have been uh, Oswaldo Alanis, mostly mm. just because that guy just worked his butt off uh, defensively. I know he had that really nice slide tackle towards the second half of the game. And yeah, he did. Uh, and I mentioned, I mean, we both mentioned it, our, our strikers and attacking mids were just struggling and right. to have a defender have the most shots on goal on the, in the game is just kind of and again, four, baffling. Four just, shots, right? So four shots. Yeah. And they were all from corners too. So it's like, it's a, it was a little refreshing to see their set pieces actually right. convert into shots on goal versus where I'm pretty sure um, everyone's noticed that most of our set pieces, we just tend to throw away and right. It's been a, a theme for the earthquakes where they get scored on on set pieces, but when it's yep. their turn to have the set pieces, they just can't convert anything really. And, and last year they used to, like you said, get scored on set pieces, but this, this game, they actually had about like 10 set pieces on yeah. us and they didn't score on anything. So I was like, Oh, well, at least this lineup looks sound against set pieces. And maybe that's why we saw Wando and Rios both out there to kind of help in the aerial attack. I was thinking that I was like, yeah, Wando playing the left wing. Like, no way. Like what's going it on was here? So weird. <laughs> right. <laughs> and seeing him in the middle, just passing. I'm like, I'm right. a striker, but all right, right, let's do it. And then, they really played through the right 80% of the game. And then once Cade Cowell came in, then they played through the middle. Um, but Cade Cowell had opportunities to shoot and he didn't shoot. Yeah. Um, that's a little different than Andy Rios and Wando not having any, any shots on goal um, because 
they were actually passing to Cade Cow, you know. So, yeah. um, so yeah, maybe Cal's that's got to be a little more selfish. Like, right. hey man, if if you got if you got a instinct to shoot, go for it, man. I mean, yeah. so far our other strikers have not hit hit the ball to the net. So, right. Uh, there was this one chance. I forget in what minute, but he had a good chance where he was running, but then he stopped and then right. passed it to Piero. To Piero. Like, mm-hmm. That was, I think, in the eightieth minute or seventy fifth minute. Yeah. But yeah. Th- that shows where he's 17 years old, right? So yeah, definitely the kid has a lot to grow. I mean, he if has he, high maybe, potential. Yeah, definitely. Maybe I mean, I guess you're always gonna want to put it on your you know strongest foot, right? So ah, uh, I can't blame him because I do the same thing in FIFA, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just too. It's like, hey man, I don't think I have a clear shot, and if you have that feeling, you know, you're right. probably gonna not give it your best shot. So right, uh, and um, but. Hey, big news came out that he was on the preliminary roster for the U S men's gold yeah. cup. So um, definitely that there's a lot of promise in this kid. And, and you know what, I, I'm actually kind of thinking that I was talking to my wife earlier. We, we released a video on our YouTube about Cade Cal's saying that he would leave the door open for the Mexican national team. And I was like, man, maybe, maybe we put a little bit of pressure on the U S men's national team with that, with that video. Cause it got like 10,000 views. I was like, maybe they saw it and they were like, Oh, snoop, you know, we need to, we need to call him up now and then play him in the Copa Auto. So we'll see how that plays out. Right. So, um, yeah, it's going to be fun. I mean, the gold cup, I, I feel like it's more t- geared towards like MLS squads versus like, Hey, you got to qualify for the world cup. So we got to get our European stars. in. so, right. US, right. I mean, in a different topic that they, they're, they're an exciting team, especially with the rivalry with Mexico and us Mexico games are always going to be fun. Right. So, always. um, but we, I want to see Kid Cal in those games too. So getting that experience, that swagger that Jackson Ewell came back with, I want to see that from Kid Cal too. Um, and when Marcos Lopez comes back on top of that, man, he has played lights out against Brazil. The best player Huge. for Peru for, for Brazil against Brazil, right? He'd shut down yeah. Gabriel Sous. He, he, uh, I think he megged Neymar or something. Yeah. It was something where it was like, geez, that's Neymar, you know, like, and that's Marcos Lopez. And I saw some things out of Marcos Lopez that I've never seen in a Quakes uniform. So I'm excited to see him back. But I was talking to my family and they were saying uh, he's probably not going to be in the Quakes uniform for long if he keeps playing like that. And I was like, yeah, you know, that's probably true because we're so stacked at that position. I mean, we saw Hudson in there today and usually it's not Hudson, right? It's Lucho, Abacasis, it's Tommy Thompson, it's Paul Marie, um, literally all these options that we have. So maybe Mark Slobus gets sold as well. Um, but a little back to the game, right? So back to the game, it's 0-0, zero, zero, Cade Cal passes it to Fierro. Who do you think had the worst performance of the game for you? The worst performance, I would say actually they all performed not not terribly. I mm. mean, it's just more of I think if anything, I would just say it on team chemistry. Mm. It, it just it, it didn't feel like it was there. It yeah. Even though we still have the GOAT Wondolowski, it just it still feels like there's no identity to this team. I mean, mm. I thought when Ewell took over the captaincy for a couple of games, I thought, you know, hey, this is Ewell's chance to like to take the team. Like, yeah. you guys, come on. We got to win this. We got to get the three points. But mm. uh, yesterday, it just seemed like it was a lot of independent um, performances where yeah, Houston struggled, but he came back and he was very solid with his passing. Right. Uh, Flo, I mean, he had that early yellow, so he was already cautious throughout the whole game. But he he was <laughs> maybe he plays better on a yellow, to be honest. <laughs> right. I mean, he was more, more he was more defensive instead right. of being the, the uh, antagonist. And I know he loves being being that loud mouth in the right. game. I know when I see his Instagram posts, he's like, This is my <laughs> damn house. You get out of here. I'm like Hey man, <laughs> right. you can talk all you want, but you know, well, let's get those three points first. <laughs> and he, he came on the pod saying that he wanted to be the best center back in the league. And, you know, he's pulled it around a little bit. I mean, I think he's having a better season than he did last year. Um, yeah, I mean, definitely. that Jordan Moore's clip is always cemented in my mind, but of him getting turned on six different camera angles in, in yeah, Seattle. Was- so. <laughs> But man, man, yeah, he's he's turned it around a little bit, so I'm happy to see that as well. Yeah, um, and- Jay, yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Jesse. Oh no, I was about to say uh, the last piece to that center back was Alanis. I felt like we really, hmm. really missed him, especially in the previous games. I know Beeson is up and coming, but yeah. I feel like he still has probably a couple years to kind of develop into that center back role. Yeah. And uh, it, that veteran presence with Alanis was really felt. And this game, yep. I, I was 
more safe. I was like, okay, Alanis is back. And yeah, he, he, he was performing as he should as a, as a center back. He was blocking shots. He was yeah. uh, intercepting them. And then again, he was also on the offense with, right. with the corner kicks. Right. And, and this game kind of cemented it for me. If Alanis is available, you have to put him in. I know you, a lot of you guys like Tanner Beeson, but offensively we need goals. And if yeah. Alanis is going to be the one with the most shots on goal, perfect. He, in every corner, he was getting his head on the ball, every single corner. So it definitely is an aerial threat on the offensive side as well. Um, yeah. But scout hot, taller players, man. I yeah. mean, that's all I'm gonna say. I mean, when I'm seeing the quakes, I'm like, we're really short, yeah, especially you know what I, with like corner kicks. You know what I also think too? We're really slow sometimes, right? Like Super we slow. don't have that like <laughs> killer. I mean, Cade Cowell, yes, yes, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, that's a you know phenomenon. But sometimes I feel like we just get blown away by speed, and it's just like, oh man, like like when Fierro was out there. Yeah, when Fierro was out there with like Hudes or something and Flo, and I'm like, oh no, 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 it's it's bad, it's bad, you know, like she yeah. got a little bias. But I mean, just look at uh, Austin FC's Gallagher; he was just outpacing right. Jutes, and I'm like, how do you outpace a Brazilian, man? <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, who's this guy? Like, did someone give him some Verde juice or something? <laughs> right, and so it's just it is frustrating to see that. I yeah. I, I did notice that as well. The Quakes are not a, a speedy team, and right. I, I feel like the game's just gonna get faster and faster. So right. Uh, that's probably it's one of the key things if you're gonna get a dp get someone who's fast so. right or or skilled right like skilled dribbling yeah anything even, even like guys even guys they brought in like andy rios and carlos fierro they're not fast so it's like like what's going on here right so yeah definitely it's, it's like what you mentioned you're like hey i'm only here for you to set up the cross and i'll right. try to finish it but i mean there's no finishing yet so right right and because i don't i guess sometimes there's no connection right or there's yeah. just what I, you know what i, I honestly saw because uh since my andy rios take and i've defended that guy i've been watching him a lot and he complains a lot when christian espinoza shoots the ball and and i saw a little bit from wando today too so wando has said before that they played too much hero ball like you said everybody's playing their own game and they're not really connecting well I think that's truly what's happening. I think either Espinoza wants to get out of the funk or Chofis wants to get on the highlight reel. And then they don't get that, 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 that last pass. Like when you have an open three, but you can get an even more open three in basketball and you see the warriors kind of just throw the ball around and get yeah. Steph Curry open or, or Clay Thompson at the wing, you know, something like that needs to happen where someone's looking for that extra pass and that's not happening. So, but speaking a little bit about, Gallagher, right? The another player for Austin FC that was crazy was Cecilio Dominguez, oh, right? Man. Oscar Give that man an Oscar, Oscar winning <laughs> Cecilio Dominguez. Like, man, I can't believe I, we haven't talked about it once, but the ref was not he was good at the beginning, but then it was like, oh, what's, what's going on? Like Alex yeah. Ring got like four fouls and he didn't get a yellow. Like, what's going on? Nah, yeah. I mean, he was trying to dictate the tempo of the game at first. Mm. Like, hey, man, Flo, take it easy. Here's your first yellow. I mean, yeah. you've already fouled this guy like three or four times. Mm. And so I was like, all right, Earthquakes, let's just tone it down a little. You know, the, this is their home opener. I right. mean, it's always, I, I always say this San Jose and referees never get along. I right. Mean, never. So, <laughs> never. Yeah. And so uh, when I saw that supposedly face hit where he, just barely grazes his chest or something. Oh, maybe he does slap his chest, but not his right. face. And right just, at all. How is that at not all. a yellow? <laughs> right. Or why don't you let the play happen? Right. And then see. Oh, it killed off our momentum. Yeah. Yeah. So that's my whole thing. Is like I was talking. I was talking to my wife. I was like, "There's VAR. Like, what? Like you can go back and say, oh, he slapped him in the face. Okay, let's call a goal back.' You know, like, okay, no problem. But a lot of the a lot of the refs in this league are too stubborn, or maybe in world football, right? Are just too stubborn to look at VAR when it's needed. So definitely, still VAR is has been here for two years, right? And it's still a new thing. We're still saying, hey, you should have went to VAR. But it's it's always going to be like that. So definitely yeah. once maybe in 20, 30 years, maybe they'll go to VAR every single time, but then where is it really soccer, right? It's just going to be stop, 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 stop. You know? So the um, age old question, like in the NFL, like what, what's a catch, you know? <laughs> right, 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 right. So definitely it, it was disappointing to see that Cecilia Domingo or Dominguez was just having his way. And I think the ref kind of maybe, maybe Garber called them and said, was like, Hey, like, let's get Austin a win, you know? <laughs> yeah. Let's, you uh, know, like just be a little lenient towards them, but if the earthquakes foul, you know, do what you got to right. do. Man. You know, Matthew McConaughey's out here, like, and he's in a green yeah. suit. Like, 
let's get them a win okay <laughs> right it's like we're trying to grow the game so right <laughs> do, do what you need to do with our <laughs> with our new favorite teams yeah right no but definitely I, I saw a lot of comments about the pitch the pitch looked like what Avaya had before this year um so we'll probably see austin mc fans complain about that in two to three years or when they have a rugby tournament and then afterwards the pitch is ruined forever <laughs> right i know Oh, that, that, that was a weird thing to do it was like hey guys right new grass but new uh, new a, stadium but we're gonna have this all-star game of uh lacrosse or was it lacrosse no, it, it was rugby sevens i think and then it was lacrosse and it was just like yeah. oh man like what are you doing yeah, like, what are you doing on? i thought yeah. this was our soccer specific stadium right and what do you think about their stadium in austin the q2 stadium did you like it oh it looks it looks really cool yeah i mean i i'm but I don't know about that Texas heat, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. All the cooling breaks. But, I mean, I guess the East Bay is kind of feeling that. Ivan's out in Livermore, and they're at 96 degrees or 95 degrees, so they're feeling that heat, too. At least, yeah, you know, been, at least it's, it's dry or humid heat or dry heat out there. It's humid heat out here. And, man, I don't even know if my shirt's wet or if it's <laughs> if it's if it's regular out here, dog. Like, you got to understand this humid heat is completely different, but. At least I think it does play a role with the earthquakes overall, like physique. It's just, I mean, training in the Bay Area is just, I mean, right. you're always in 70 degree weather. Sometimes like yesterday, right now we're under a heat wave where it's just like right. 93, 95. But I mean, those players in Austin and Dallas and Florida, they're just weather. Much, it's just yeah. Different weather, different uh, extremes of, of either cold, hot. And right. with earthquakes, it's just more of like, hey, let's go to Santa Barbara for a training. <laughs> right. you know? Cancun, you know? Cancun. So it's like you can't really train the players for those kind of uh, weather yeah. weather environments. So it's like you can tell, especially with I was kind of nervous about Wondolowski and yeah. just how gassed he was towards the end. And I'm like, yeah. man, we we need a statue for you, but at the same time, you got to take care of your health, especially during that heat. Yeah, but I mean, hey, I hate to talk about this, but what happened with like you know, in the Euros with Denmark, like, uh, you know, you don't really yeah. know nowadays, like guys, you, you need to take care of yourself. Oh. So definitely um, it's something that you need to think about, but looking at the standings now, we're kind of looking. Okay. I mean, San Jose is in currently out of playoff position in eighth place, but you know, it could be worse. We could be FC Dallas in last place, right? So a point on the road and the home opener, nothing wrong with it. I think we did an okay job, but looking forward now, we're going into Orlando City. Into Orlando City, where we played our MLS's back tournament and had great, great days. Let's see if we can bring back that form, right? What do you think the, the game's going to be like, Jesse? I think it's going to be a little more of the same. I think mm -hmm. Almeida's going to tinker a bit with the new formation that uh, he kind of experimented yesterday. Yeah. Uh, I feel like... Jutin will still be in the left back. Uh, he'll probably just yeah. get some few pointers here and there. Just uh, you can't really do anything if you, if the guy's just taller and faster than you. You just right. gotta keep trying like what he did yesterday. So I give him kudos for that. I mean, yeah, I, I never try to knock down a player in our roster. I mean, I know everybody's giving it their their hundred mm. uh, percent. Like it's their last game or right, right. Or they're they're just it. It's just sometimes you. <laughs> So you just get unlucky and right, I just right. feel like that's just been the trend for the earthquakes for the past couple of years. It's just like, Hey man, we've had good players, but yeah. it's just, when it comes, it comes down to it, it's just, they're it's just not money time, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, but looking at Wando starting at the left wing, it's like, man, maybe we do need a winger, right? Like maybe that's the position of need. Cause I don't know if Wando's going to start next game. I, I mean, Tuesday is what in two days, uh, happy father's day to all you guys out there in America. But, um, yeah, two days. I mean, Wando looks pretty gassed. I know he won the beat test in the preseason, so maybe he's up to fitness. Uh, but we might see a little bit of change of the tides. I mean, I, I think we're going to see Lucho Avocasis out there. Um, Paul Marie left with cramps, so possibly see Lucho somewhere out there yeah. on the field because um, if Tommy Thomas is not feeling it again, um, probably see the uh, Utsen start again with either Lucho or Tommy on the other side um, while Paul Marie sits because of cramps or something. Um, cause Marcos Lopez is still not there. Center backs probably going to be the same. I think they had a solid yeah. game. Um, and they've become a solid pairing this year. Um, even if we've yeah. been losing, it's only been one zero. It hasn't been the four or five zero losses. So definitely something that it's looking a little more solid. Um, and in the cent, uh, the midfield probably going to see the same, right? It's probably going to be Yule, Remedi, 
and trophies. And then the striker, maybe something different. Maybe we see Cal start with Rios or Cal with Wondolowski um, and Espinosa on the right. And then maybe Wondolowski on the left, or maybe we see Fierro start. Who knows, right? Who knows with right. this team? Yeah. I feel like they're just going to, it is a weird kind of week where you do have three yeah. games in less than seven days. So I'm right. pretty sure Almeida is trying to juggle, especially after an international break. So right. a lot of people are probably not going to be fit to play mm. the whole 90 minutes. So he's probably just going to try to rotate, as you mentioned. So right. I do feel like with Orlando, he is going to change it up. I, I forgot about Abacasis. I mean, right, right. Um, he, he's probably going to rotate for, for Judson uh, mm. just to kind of give us that solid left back. And then, Hopefully Tommy Thompson can play uh, the full 90 minutes next game. If not, yeah. I mean, I'd rather have him at the Cali Classico and right, uh, right. get those important three points there. And I think we're, we might see, like you said, a little more tinkering for Orlando because it's it's a Eastern Conference team. So if we lose to them, it's not as big as losing to your own conference. So I think that's we, why we we – possibly saw something a little different because we don't play Austin as much, but uh, maybe we're going to see something a little more different with Orlando, uh, but exciting game. I mean, I don't think they're going to have nanny. I'm not so sure. I have to double check that, but I think he might be suspended, um, but big news. Daryl DK is back. So hopefully he doesn't start oh, his man. first game in Orlando that's not uh, good. <laughs> yeah, against us. Cause that's not going to be fun. I mean, his first game back, um, Daryl DK, you know, he's a good, yeah. he's a good player. The I mean, if he it, does play, I mean, just put in K Cowell. I mean, put, put your best player out there right. against his, their play, best player out there. Who's yeah. pretty much on a hot streak. I mean, I, it was kind of a surprise just to see the, a new striker come out of Orlando and right. Uh, he's been lighting it up and I'm like, yeah. oh, man, <laughs> and, they, and Orlando still has Alexander Pato, but I don't think he's going to, nah. right? They're, they're just, they have fruits of labor. Like, what's going on here, right? We can't even get one guy. <laughs> it's just tough, too. I mean, yeah. I don't, we don't even have an official academy. So I, right, I know right. that, that that was one of the things um, when Wolf was still our co owner. I knew mm. it was Fisher and Wolf who joined together to right. bring back the whole place. And so, um, Wolf's first intention was, "Hey, I need a stadium. I this is what we've been battling mm. before. You know, this is what happened. It fell out. You guys moved to Houston. Um, he's like, but I want my soccer specific stadium. And so Avaya came in, mm. or now PayPal Park. And so right after a couple of years, he's like, "Hey, man, I'm just gonna retire, go to LA, live my life." He's like, "Here, Fisher, have the keys." But then um, he's like, "The only thing that's left is the academies. You know, but." you guys got this, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll figure out the funding and, and yeah. the construction, but here we are t- almost a decade later, and right. Still no Academy. And I know the, the area surrounding the airport where the stadium's at, there's, mm. there's a lot of land. And so yeah. uh, that was their plan. It's just to have the academies right next door. And so uh, it does suck, but yeah. I mean, uh, it is the Bay area. I know with Monterey seaside, I know there's uh a lot of good soccer players out there i know definitely a yeah. couple of quakes legends are actually from from that area so uh right it's just a matter of time and i, I know soccer's growing so yeah a lot of more more kids are going to be interested in playing yeah and especially in like Tul- tulemi county or modesto area like in serez california where k cal comes from that's a good pool too because there's a lot of mexican-american or latin american yeah. people in that area and of course they like playing soccer so it's something that it's great to see. I mean, Sacramento not coming to them less might help us with that academy because it, it doesn't put that much pressure on because we still own the rights because we're the only MLS team, right? So, yeah, so it's a, it's a little depressing, right? I'm a little depressed about not having a full on academy, but maybe if we sell Cade Cowell or, or Marcos Lopez, that funds it, right? So maybe they finally yeah. see the fruits of the labor. So. And it's going to be interesting too because uh, just talking more about the organization is that uh, obviously most fans know that Fisher also has some shares with the Oakland A's and yeah, yeah. the Oakland A's are, are in trouble too of moving right. to possibly Las Vegas as well or yeah. some some I've heard rumors of Montreal being in that oh, place wow. as well so um, it'd be interesting to see in the next couple of years or maybe it's going to get resolved this year where if Oakland stays then right. we, we still get Fisher which which will suck. I mean, yeah, right, right, a, right. As a Quakes fan, it's just more of like that ambition that doesn't just doesn't show like most yeah. other teams or owners. Like Matthew McConaughey is his first season. He's already trying to get as many people to come watch the, the, right, the games. Right. And 
he's like, Hey, I'll, I'll bring in the players and need be, but it's going to take some time. But for now, you know, this is what, this is what we can, um, right. Get started produce. off with and, yeah. and yeah. produce. And so with, with our current organization, I know with Jesse, with Matias, they, they do want to succeed, but mm. at the same time, it's like, it's kind of hard when you have a third partner who's, who's not right. invested in it. So at, like, at, yeah, we spoke about this on, on a, a podcast before me and Ivan, we said, maybe the best thing for the quakes is seeing the A's leave. Cause then maybe Fisher sells cause it's too far away from his other affiliation. And yeah. who knows, maybe we get a, you know, investor that wants a brand new team or, and then we get another crest. I mean, that's probably the best case scenario or the worst case scenario is we become Atletico San Jose and we get, right. we get a new crest and maybe they move us to SF and, you know, but. Or that uh, there was a rumor that they were going to rename themselves after Club America. Oh yeah. Yeah. This was like during the talks about, um, what was it during the, the whole stadium talks? Yeah. Uh, they were talking about potentially calling them like Club America too, kind of like Chivas USA was. Oh. Oh my goodness no but way they they quickly shun that idea down they're like no this is like the dumbest idea ever and they're like okay well we're moving to houston and uh to right. this day i hate alexi lawless for that because he came in took over because they saw he saw that there was a winning team here and yeah he wanted he wanted a part of that so um he also was part of the the landon donovan contract issue where he cut the contract from his loan Mm. that made him a free agent and so la galaxy picked him up at that point and so right, uh, I right. left a sour taste in my mouth uh, i'm like i'm no longer a landon donovan fan i'm no longer an <laughs> alexi lalas fan i mean you guys took right. my childhood team away you know <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll come back we'll 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 come back and so i mean with, like the yeah with all the rebands that are coming up i mean chicago fire just had one the crew just had one um and i think there was a rumor that there's another one coming up. What do you think if the Quakes change their logo again? No, I would say no. no? I mean, uh, that's one I've been pretty spoken about that. It's just yeah. that for a league that's only been around 25 years. Right. Um, it, it just seems kind of weird to just keep rebranding the, like Columbus. Columbus has yeah. been there since the inaugural season. And I like their last crest better, to be honest. That, that was yeah, a good So, crest. so yeah. it's like, why are you changing if you guys want to implement history and right. fan bases, why you keep switching it up just for cash grabs. And so yeah. um, I do get in some, some heated debates with some other <laughs> MLS fans who are just like, ah, yeah. it's just uh, other teams do it too. I'm like, yeah, every 50 years or something yeah, like right, that, right, right. <laughs> 10 years. But I mean, even I always like saying it, I'm like, even a, a, a league two from England right. hasn't changed their logo since like yeah. 1800s. I'm like, there's here we are. Be- yeah. yeah more can be with shrimps literally shrimps on it right so. yeah <laughs> you can so. tell it's an old logo by just looking at it and like, right, why don't right. you change it and they're like well it's our history and i'm like yeah. oh okay fair enough and so it's yeah, just you know, i don't like it man the one problem i have with the logo is the ball the ball makes it look dated i think if they just got rid of the ball it would be I like I would be yes. completely okay with the same logo, just get rid of the ball. And then maybe that Chevron just like have it like connect at that point and boom, done. Perfect. Done. Keep all, yeah. all the, yeah. all the things. Same. I liked how someone pointed it out. Um, They say it looks like a clip art from what you would see in like those right. free third party apps. Like right. they'll just stick a random soccer ball in there. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I did like, I loved our first logo where yeah. it did yeah, still yeah. had a soccer ball, but it had the Silicon Valley sun in the background. And I was mm. like, that, that felt more like home, kind of like Chicago's fire. Um, mm. Yeah. With uh, the city with flag the, and the so. fireman logo type of thing. Yeah. So it, it kind of like gives the idea like, Hey, we're the Silicon Valley. We're right. the earthquakes, but now they're just like, Hey, we're a, we're Quakes. an FC soccer United, uh, some <laughs> if generic you, if you, name. Real. If you had to pick a European name, which one would you pick? Earthquakes United. It's yeah, Earthquakes United. Okay. Yeah. Or San Jose United, you know. Okay. I, I still like Atletico San Jose. I think that, Atleti- yeah, that one's fun. That might be the best sounding because it's San Jose, right? It sounds Latin. So like Atletico or maybe like Real is already Real Salt Lake. So not really good. Um, Inter Miami. Interesting. Yeah. yeah Inter. Right. Right. So, uh, or, or Columbus SC, right? Oh, that one's horrible. That one's horrible. If you just get rid of it, like I would be okay with Atletico San Jose earthquakes. Like, okay. Well, you can say both 
or one side of it, San Jose Earthquakes, or say Atletico San Jose, doom. But yeah, if, if they got rid of the ball in the logo, that logo should be for a lot of years, like 50 years, like you said. But in 20 years, it's gonna look a little dated with that clip bar, right? Yeah. So, so I, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure it's how it's gonna go. And yeah, I mean it, it is what it is. It's right. the MLS, they're trying to grow the game and they're trying to gain some profit. So I right. totally understand right. it on the business aspect, but when you're doing it like what when Columbus is doing it like every right. five years, it's like, yeah. hey, come on, man, like you gotta make up your mind. And yeah, <laughs> or it's unless it's like they've got new management ever since uh pre court uh, left for Austin. Pre-court yeah. left. So yeah. I kind of understand if they they've I think it's they didn't really talk to, logo, to the yeah. fans. So, but I kind of get it. it's like, hey, this is my team now, but right, right. I don't feel any affiliation with this old team name and crew. And so let's try to change it up. But mm. I mean, you got the diehard Columbus fans. Just Save like, the crew hey. too, right? <laughs> yeah, so I wish something like that could happen here with like, hey, Fisher, you know, you got to double down or something. You know, yeah. Like, we've had enough. This is like seven years. Are we the Cleveland Browns of the MLS or what? Right. Well, if Almeida leaves and I, I think, I think Almeida stays if we make the playoffs and reach the second round. I think he stays. Because maybe, maybe, just maybe, he has such a good taste that possibly one more year he could get it, you know? Yeah. Um, but if he doesn't make the playoffs or if he wins the championships, he's out. Yeah. So it's definitely, it's a sweet spot if he stays, right? Because the yeah. life in San Jose or the life in the Bay Area is just so nice compared to the rest of the world. He's a younger coach, so he'll still have opportunities after another, maybe another two or three years here. So maybe he resigns. Um, but Jesse, do you have any last kind of comments you want to say about the team before we close this up? No. Yeah. Uh, just touching up on that last one with Almeida. I mean, as soon as he was announced, I was ecstatic. I'm like, man, yeah. this might be the change that that could really turn things around. But uh, I do believe with last year, I think it really did put a wrench into his system and right. Uh, it, it really delayed. So like you said, he might want that last year just to kind of make up for his right. second or was his third year, second year. His second and year so, for COVID and things like that. Yeah. But uh, he's a good coach. So I'm pretty yeah. sure around the winter transfer window, we're going to hear those same rumors again. Like yeah. Mekki, so and so wants to get this guy yeah. off San Jose or um, but be smart. Thing, yeah. My whole thing is if they're, if they're coming right now and he's not that good, I mean, he in two years, let's say he stays, they're still going to be around. So Chivas is never going to forget what you did for them. I mean, especially yeah. when they're not doing as well right now. So, um, but not maybe, maybe he stays. Right. So maybe. I think the COVID kind of pandemic made it real, made him realize that man, San Jose in the Bay area is actually kind of a nice place to live yeah. because it's safe. Right. I mean, I know California had horrible numbers, but the Bay area really didn't. I mean, everybody masked up. Everybody kind of was a, caring for each other and i do remember the beginning of it where everybody was really treating it like it was something a lot more serious or it's very serious but something that could possibly kill you instantly so yeah. it was something that everybody was already ready for um but yeah, yeah I, I, if i made a stays i'm ecstatic <laughs> yeah it's gonna be tough mostly because it, with all these players i know we always like to talk about who is the best player mm. who's the worst player but at the same time we got to look at it like they're humans as well so yep um yeah. some people might be like hey you know rios is not our best striker we mm. got to get rid of him but it's like he's also human you know you got to look at the human aspect mm. and with matias almeida you know he just lost his father so right 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 he might be homesick and you know that might that's have true that's true plan. so yeah he's like you know as much as i would love to stay here it's like my heart's just not in it anymore and yeah you know since the passing of my father you know i kind of just want to be home with my family because that's true you know yeah. he never i don't think he's unless he did, I believe he did see him in his last moments. I'm not too sure, but that's obviously a personal right, right. matter. But um, to, to kind of see where like, Hey, you know, one of my family members could pass away and I might not be there because I'm a thousand miles away. Right. So right. It's going to be interesting, but I do hope he stays. And um, I know I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he, he gets all the love from the fans. So it's right. going to be a tough decision, but Vamos quakes. <laughs> right, right. I ask him some pretty bizarre questions, and sometimes I get a weird reaction from him. But no, he definitely gets a lot of uh, fan, uh, love from the fan base. That's for sure. But um, yeah, that wraps it up. Thank you so much, Jesse, for coming on the show. Um, I want to give a quick shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, including you, Jesse. Thank you so much. Seriously, without you guys, this is not possible. So you guys help fund 
all this, the production, I actually finally was able to buy a video processing software. So definitely you guys helped make this show possible. Um, so thank you so much. And I want to give a big shout out to our sponsors. Thank you. The beautiful game network for sponsoring this on all podcast audio formats. So thank you. You guys make that a breeze for us. So everybody can listen. And all I have to say, Jesse is go quakes. Go Quakes. Let's hope for that cup this year, man. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. And let's get a win in Orlando first and and then Classico time, right? Oh, Classico is going to be fun, man. Yeah.